Eye on Culture is sponsored by the Yanotovich Family Foundation. Eye on Culture. Preface to the large, illustrated, and very interesting book, Modernism in Keiyu, published by the University of Toronto Press in 2010, we find what seems to be the overly optimistic addition of Keiyu to the list of main centers of modernist culture, alongside the likes of Paris, Vienna, London, and New York. Most readers will wonder, can you really count early 20th century Keiyu among such international cultural metropolises? All the more in the context of modernism, which developed in Ukrainian culture with significant obstacles and devoid of wider social support. However, upon reading the 20 thoughtful essays in this over 600-page book, one will certainly be struck by the high quantity and quality of cultural output in KU during the first decades of the 20th century. This activity is all the more remarkable given that, in contrast with Paris or New York, the key period of modernism in KU occurred during a time of war, that is, during the Ukrainian Revolution of 1917-20. Thus, Keiyu's sophisticated culture was being formed within the context of hunger, heavy shelling, and changing political regimes, which often persecuted cultural activists. Particularly brutal were the Dnikin Whites and the Bolshevik Reds, along with the bloodthirsty Cheka secret police, who arrested and executed people and undertook pogroms against the population. The book Modernism in Keiyu is perhaps the first book that gives a strong sense of how rich and highly developed the cultural life of Keiyu really was, in spite of the complexities and at times terrible circumstances of life. That being said, the book, for lack of space, does not mention all of the renowned cultural activists of the time, leaving out even some truly famous ones. The compilers of the volume, theater scholar and specialist on Shakespeare from the University of Ottawa, Irina Makarik, and New York theater director, Virlana Tkach, managed to craft such a fine impression of KU by wisely creating a synthesis of cave and cultural life with its various nationalities and languages, thus presenting together the artistic achievements of various communities, primarily Ukrainian, Russian, Jewish, and Polish. Within this synthetic context, the multicultural cave of the first decades of the 20th century shines as a genuinely internationally significant center of modern art, theater, and literature. Also remarkable is the fact that in spite of the war and hostilities between nations, the various art communities of Keiyu coexisted harmoniously and cooperated with one another, rising above prejudice and ideological dogmas for the simple and humane aim of creating culture. For example, Les Kurbas and his young theater, or Mula de Tatr, worked together with the Poles, director Juliusz Osterwa, and choreographer and dancer Bronislava Nizinska, the latter of which later achieved worldwide acclaim in Paris. In the world of art, the Belarusian Greek Alexandra Exter, together with the Ukrainian Oleksandr Bohomazov, created a new school of abstract painting, drawing upon the tradition of Ukrainian folk ornamentation. At that time as well, another Kievan, Polish by blood, but Ukrainian by choice, Kazimir Malevich, having become enthralled by Ukrainian folk art, founded the artistic style of suprematism in St. Petersburg. Also, Reinhold Glier, a Frenchman by origin, honed his musical talents in Kiev and composed the music for Les Kurbas' production of Taras Chouchenko's Haidamakas. Kurbas also requested world-renowned Russian ballet master Mikhail Mortkin to teach at his young theater. For three years, Mortkin taught the actors the art of movement and plastic gesture. The intricate set designs for the theater were created by modernists of various nationalities as well, but the Meller, Anatol Petritsky, Isaac Rabinovich, and so on. It is not mere coincidence that Les Kurbas has already been mentioned several times. As the book Modernism in Kiyu indicates, Kurbas was himself the key figure in the Kiyu modernist movement and the bridge between various art and ethnic communities. In fact, he was perfectly suited for this role. He was born in Sambir in Galicia and studied at the University of Vienna. He was an actor, first in Galician and later in Kievan theaters. Thus, Kurbas knew the culture and fluently spoke the languages of Kiev's ethnic groups, and this included Yiddish. He was a man of extraordinary erudition and vast talent, not only a great actor and director, but also an accomplished pianist, ballet master, and film director. 
In fact, he was the founder of Ukrainian cinema, although all of his films were later destroyed by Stalinist censors. He was a world-class theater scholar and writer, having begun his creative career as a prose writer when Ivan Franko himself recommended his short stories for publication in the prestigious journal Literary and Scholarly Herald, Literaturno Naukovi Visnik. Kurbas was well-versed in classical and modern art, literature, and the newest trends in world theater and culture. And inasmuch as he did not have ethnic or class prejudices, he naturally found his place in various cultural settings. Impressed with Kurbas' talent, leading cave and artists joined his theatrical projects, first in the Young Theater, later in the Kiev Drama Theater, and finally in the renowned Brazil Theater. An example of the revolutionary innovation of Kurbas' artistic vision is his famous and controversial 1924 production of Shakespeare's Macbeth, which represented a new step in the development of not only Ukrainian, but also world theater. Kurbas introduced never-before-seen stage effects to present a universal story about the insatiability of human lust for power and the tragic results of such blind egocentrism. He took the action of the play out of its historical context and into the realm of parable, while at the same time grounding its events within the reality of 1920s Ukraine, depicting the victorious Soviet regime among the brutal usurpers of power. More information about this pivotal production, as well as about Les Kurbas' creative evolution, can be found in Irena Makarik's very interesting study. Her English language book, Shakespeare in the Undiscovered Born, was published in Ukrainian translation by Nika Publishers in Kyiv under the title Peretvorinya Shakespeare, Les Kurbas, Ukrainsky Modernism, Iradianska Kulturna Politika Dvatsata Rukyu. Les Kurbas was also an extraordinarily important teacher who educated an entire generation of Ukrainian theater specialists. For some time, Berezil was a true academy of theater with many directors and actor studios, and even had the first theater museum in Ukraine. And although Kurbas himself and most of the leading Berezil members were executed by the Stalinist regime, Kurbas's surviving students preserved the great traditions of the Ukrainian theater in Ukraine over the course of many difficult decades of repressive socialist realism. Kurbas's teaching system was very broad and all-encompassing. His was not the school of theatrical stereotypes. Students were inspired to learn about life and art in general, and Kurbas instilled in his students a fundamental principle, that after they set foot in his theater, their process of learning should continue unceasingly. Until the end of their days, they should unfailingly devote themselves to learning, self-knowledge, and self-development. Indeed, everyone's life journey can be enriched by devotion to learning and a passion for life and culture. On behalf of Dr. Marco Robert Stech, I'm Tanya Stech. See you next time on I on culture. Oczyma kultury sponsorowane fundacjeju Rodyny Ignatowicz. Oczyma kultury.